Uh, welcome. I'm uh, uh, Jurian uh, from uh, Silk. Silk is a data publishing uh, platform where you can uh, transform a spreadsheet, a data set, into an interactive website. Um, we decided to give these summer webinar series to explain uh, to you how you can uh, uh, gather data, how you can clean uh, data, and how you can tell stories with it uh, by building visualizations and all that stuff. And today, in our uh, first uh, episode, so to speak, uh, we'll uh, talk a little bit about uh, how uh, our data team, our Gaspar, our in-house data journalist, goes about uh, uh, gathering data and finding data for his stories. Uh, we'll be joined by Alex uh, Gimson. Hi, Alex. From, uh, Hello, everyone. From Import.io, uh, a great tool which you can use to um, scrape data from websites if you want data from websites that isn't ready, uh, readily available for download or otherwise uh, hard to get. You can use that tool to, uh, to gather it from various pages and uh, put it into a single data set. Um, and uh, at the end, we will uh, show quickly show how you can get, uh, get that data set, that spreadsheet from uh, Alex uh, and uh, convert it to a nice uh, looking uh, Silk site. We will go into uh, how to uh, clean up a data set and how to uh, like create visualizations and an analysis in later episodes, but we just wanted to show quickly what was possible at the end uh, uh, of this one. Um, there's also a Q&A uh, module in this uh, Google uh, uh, Hangouts on Air thing. Uh, it, if you hover over the left side of your screen, you see a Q&A button. You can use that to uh, ask us questions. Do this anytime, anytime you, um, you want to ask us something. Um, at the end, we can have a look at those questions and try to uh, answer as many uh, of them as we can. Um, so, um, uh, I want to give the floor to Casper, uh, our in-house uh, data journalist, who will, uh, yeah, will uh, show us what he does and how, where he gets his best data from. Go on, Casper. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was waiting, waiting for you to give me the... Yeah, you, you have it now. Okay. Um, well, as I already have been introduced, as a... Uh, uh, Data journalist at Silk. Um, um, like I said, we'll, I'll go into a little bit, sort of how we maybe find our stories, and um, we just go into sort of the first part uh, to get to the scraping. Everything we do after the scraping with it, like we said, we'll go into that uh, in different webinars. Um, I think I'll be just going to switch to share my screen from now on, so you can just follow uh, follow what I'll be doing. Just a second. And if everything is all right, yeah. You'll see my screen from now on. Um, um, I try to think of uh, sort of the, any kind of structured process that that we that we uh, that we would have in collecting data and finding stories, since that was sort of the, the topic of this webinar. And I, and and I realized that we that we really have more uh, of a of a sort of organic uh, process of finding the stories that we want to write about. Um, if you follow the Silk Site in the Silk uh, Gallery or uh, the Silk of the Bay uh, email list, you'll see that we basically every day. Uh, produce new little or big big silk sites uh, with different topics, and um, they usually sort of come up out of any kind of uh, personal interest of any of the of any of our uh, of our team, not just the data journalists, but our, our entire team. Um, so a lot of it just comes from reading, following news, reading books, reading articles, um, and and usually you'll just have something in you you'll always have a question in the back. A question, sort of, in the back of your mind, that uh, always looks at what you're doing or what you're reading, as in what kind of data would be interesting to to, to provide any kind of angle uh, angle to it. So a lot of it um, just comes up that way, and we have a we just sort of have a, a, a big spreadsheet where we put all kinds of uh, ideas. We also have a um, a chat channel where we put all of our content ideas, and we uh, uh, so everything you think you think up, uh, we think of we 
put in there for other people to review, and then we sort of decide on which topic we wanna we wanna focus on. And even a lot a lot of the, the best topics I think come out of uh, of our uh, of our lunches when we have lunch with the whole team and we're talking about all kinds of stuff. And then you get the dynamic of different people, and then we can we usually think of some of, of, a, of an interesting uh, new topic. Um, but maybe since like because because of this we also uh, like it made me think about more where we actually get our stories from. So uh, uh, we might get even more sort of structured in it, but I like the fact that it's sort of uh, very organic and it can just come up uh, 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 from, from anyone at our team. Um, another thing is we're getting more and more into is any kind of collaborations with journalists, with NGOs, with other with companies, and we get, uh, as we're growing, we, we're, we're getting more uh, more actual co collaborations and more requests. Um, I think one of the one of the uh, nicest examples of a of a journalistic collaboration was with the Bellingcat um, project, um, journalistic project that is focusing on that is actually looking and crowdsourcing uh, information about uh, troop movements in the Ukraine from like, let's say Russian troop movements in the Ukraine, and they they're building a whole a database uh, following all kinds of movements by using YouTube analysis. And that's just a really interesting journalistic um, um, example. Uh, some non-journalistic examples. Uh, I mean, you have other NGOs that that use uh, Silk uh, or that we take the the data from any kind of reports from and put it into Silk because that's better than a than a PDF. File formats to go through. Um, one example is uh, the Atomico, which is a uh, um, a large um, uh, a funding company, and they uh, they they have their own research on uh, on big companies, on, on billion dollar companies, and um, that's also something we we sort of collaborate with. But we're also open for for any good suggestions. Um, maybe if someone watching is has has some kind of data that they want or that they uh, that they already have or that they would like to have scraped, uh, um, I think feedback at silk.co is a good uh, uh, address to contact to contact us. But if there's any other ways through the through the homepage to to contact us if you have a if you have a, an interesting topic. Um, like I said, maybe more journalistic than than some other uh, commercial topics, and I think we we try to focus on any kind of uh, political and social mm, mm, topics, and then also a lot on tech and business data. But we also tend to just stray and have all kinds of um, sort of miscellaneous uh, topics, just depending on what we found, like. Uh, this silk that we made, um, finding all kinds of propaganda posters, usually from, uh, like you see here, I've made uh, several collections because they're from different eras. And we have World War uh, One propaganda posters in them, or uh, from the U.S. or the U.K. or some Soviet post posters, um, which is really not like a specific topic, or it doesn't really fall in any kind of real. Uh, um, uh, section or something, but it's really uh, just sort of fun and interesting, uh, interesting to do. Um, another example is uh, my colleague Alicia made uh, basically a silk site of um, of all the Tarantino movies and putting it into data, data and uh, just going over the, those numbers where you can see all kinds of movies where Tarantino was a producer, was an actor in it, was a writer of it. You see the budgets. And um, you never know when you start with a topic like this what you'll find in it. Maybe it's nothing, but maybe it's something really interesting can come out. Uh, so the idea is to, to just any kind of data that you have to put it into a format like this, into Silk, where you can uh, either like this use um, uh, uh, use galleries, but sometimes also you can you can put this in in any kind of bar charts or column charts, and, they, and it, it will you will sort of see something interesting in, in there and, and, and try to, to find something, uh, to find a story in there. Um, 
I think this is a good time to get into, let's say, more specifics of the actual, um, uh, let's say, answering the question of finding a data resource. Uh, what we've done in the last year is also compile uh, sort of a, a handbook, which is just as much for us as anyone interested in it, uh, where we sort of keep keep all the things that we do into building silk sites uh, in in a handy handbook, so we can uh, we can look at it. And so we're we're also collecting uh, all types of uh, data resources. And I should just go over this quickly to show some examples of just like good, reliable, depending on what you're looking for, uh, resources. And almost all of these have uh, download options where we we also sort of tag if it has an API that we can use, if uh, what kind of output they, they, they have, if it's a CSV or a JSON or any kind of other kind of uh, format that we can use. Um, I think two good examples. Uh, first, the UN has a huge uh, data, has their own uh, uh, sort of a custom domain data .un.org, where you can find any kind of uh, information that you're looking for on, on different countries. So you can focus on a specific topic, maybe like the Millennium Development Goals, and compare compare those goals for different countries. Or you can focus maybe on one specific country and look at all the different kinds of uh, census data and other, other data that, that's available. Um, so that's just a really good, reliable source, usually. And they provide everything with, uh, like, you can download everything that you uh, that you find there. Another example. Oh, Kaspar, can I ask you okay. something? Yeah, sure. Do you uh, maybe have a silk handy uh, which you use that UN data for? Um, yeah, we usually, I think we, we use it for several things. One oh, thing yeah. I have made, which is very specific, is this one, which is really about the. Uh, so sort of a analysis of where we, where the world stands, where different countries stand with the Millennium Development Goals. Cool. It's a status update. Um, and for this, I collected all the, the different, all the data on the different uh, goals that include the, uh, that make up the Millennium Development Goals. And for each part, for each goal, I would look at all the specific targets that are that are mentioned. For instance, have the proportion. Like by uh, 2015, compared to 1990, uh, we, the UN, wanted to have the, the proportion of people whose income is less than one dollar a day. So that's something you can really just sort of measure using all their indicators. And uh, I put that all into uh, um, into data so we could compare sort of which targets are really far off and which are uh, um, uh, going all right, or, or which uh, objectives have already been met. So that is, uh, this is an example of uh, where I used all kinds of uh, UN data. Cool. Um, and the other example I want to show, I think, I don't have a, I remember using this multiple times, uh, but I don't, don't think I have a quick example ready, which is the, the FBI crime statistics for, of course, the, the United States. Um, but they, um, uh, well, sometimes it's a, sometimes you have to really go through to find the exact Correct data that you that you want, but they uh, they they have all kinds of uh, crime reports, and you can really focus on um, uh, locations. Also, I, I think they have it by uh, by state, but sometimes also by county by county or sheriff um, location. So you can really com compare the numbers that you that you get uh, in this case throughout the United States. Um, but these are just some quick examples of just big maybe government or intergovernmental uh, data resources that have just easy download options. There's always, uh, maybe I should, should show it in this case, with the UN data. If we, uh, go for instance to the quick stats, which is usually There's a lot in there. There's even so much in it that I just don't even get a quick example. 
What I just want to find is a quick example of well, this kind of, any kind of data that they provide. These are tables. And the funny thing is that, I, OK, I was just about to say we don't even have download option. But the website does do. look like it's from 1990, I must it, say. Yeah, OK. This one, maybe it's not. I think the World Bank has a similar, similar uh, data uh, website that looks a little bit more up to date. But you'll see that everything here is just you can available in an in an Excel format. Um, so that's just those are just some quick examples. In many other cases, maybe you're looking at something and there's just a Wikipedia list already easy, and there's no need to actually do anything with it other than just copy paste it because this is just something you can just copy paste. This is this is definitely a Wikipedia page that I've used uh, many times. Or always have. I have a spreadsheet somewhere, and I can use it uh, anytime we make something uh, uh, with a U.S. topic. Usually, all the data comes with uh, where the location, the state, is uh, given in some kind of abbreviation. So, for instance, Alabama is AL and Alaska is AK, and that's the format of the state name in the data set that you've downloaded, maybe from the UN or the FBI. Just using a, just copy copy pasting a simple Table like this gives you the uh, the the possibility just to to uh, to translate uh, all the all these 50 states, what the abbreviation is, and and well, put in the actual name of the state. Um, so for something like this, of course, no script will need it because you can just copy copy paste this into into a spreadsheet. Um, and then we get to the let's say our, the, the 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 third kind of data resource that we have. And there's lots of these. Is and this is something. Uh, again, I, I I don't even know how we stumbled upon this. We just found this by reading it, by uh, by talking among uh, with other with other people, and we um, found this effort, uh, this website that collects all kinds of uh, uh, news reports, and through the news reports collects data on people in the U.S. that have that are killed by the police because. For all the FBI crime statistics uh, that are available, something as simple as the number of citizens killed by police in any kind of uh, 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 instance. I mean, there, it's not implied that it's uh, uh, that it's a bad killing. It, there, it could be uh, all kinds of uh, uh, scenarios in which it happened. But there are just for the U.S. there are no uh, statistics available. So this website, uh, among others, took it upon itself to. Collect news reports about it and uh, and collect the data about it. So you you have uh, the person, uh, uh, the name of the person uh, killed, the their age, their location, uh, the, whether they're male or female, uh, what their race was, uh, and what the and what the the, the date was. Um, and they, I mean, this was really a good effort, and they put everything together in one big. Uh, website by year and by by month as you see here, and it's pretty. Um, I mean, there's a lot. There's there's lots of uh, lots of cases. Um, so while this is a very good effort and 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 interesting data, just looking at it like this, uh, a table like this doesn't really. Well, you you just know that there's lots of stories and lots of interesting uh, statistics to be found in here, but you won't find it. Just by looking at it like this, um, you could try to also sort of copy paste this uh, uh, this table, just like you would do maybe with the Wikipedia table. But then you would miss out on, let's say, the the underlying pages that make up these, for instance, these uh, uh, the images that are linked to to all these to all these person to uh, the original Facebook page. And um, um, so it doesn't really give you all the information that you that you would want to get out of it. Um, and I think this is a good moment to hand it over to uh, to Alex, who can show uh, what you can do with a with a with a with a website like this with Import IO, where you could uh, where you could very easily scrape all that information and get it into a spreadsheet. So. Alex. Hello. Hi, Hi Alex. Hi. Hello, everyone. You can take over. So I'm going to share my screen now. Uh, and thank you very much, 
Casper and Urian for that um, introduction. Uh, let me just share my screen. Sure. Cool. So yeah, uh, uh, my name's Alex. Um, as um, Urian and Casper both said, I work for Import. Um, and what we are is a, a web extraction company. So we take web pages such as this lovely Killed by Police page here, which, as Casper pointed out, isn't very usable. We can see lots of data here, but we can't really use it, can't really analyze it. And what we do is we transform this web page here to a table of data that you can then visualize, analyze, um, and basically do what we're going to do uh, today with it. So to do this, it's pretty simple. You just need to get the URL and copy the URL and come over to import.io and insert that URL into this URL bar here and click on try it out. <clears throat> now I might just have to reload my there. So what happens when you click on try it out, the platform um, analyzes the web page and it looks at where all of the data on the web page is and it will slowly start to extract it. Now because this web page is quite long, uh, I think there's a couple of thousand rows in it, it obviously takes a little bit more time. But once we've got it all extracted, you can see that now it's in usable format. So we've got the date, we've got the link to all the news articles, we've got the name and the age, we've got the state and the gender and the name again here. So what we've got here is a nice structured table of all of the data on killedbypolice.net. And what this then allows us to do is put it into Silk and then start visualizing it. So what we can do here is download it as a CSV and then I can send that over to Casper and he can do his cool stuff with it. But what we also do is we can also make an API to the page. So this may mean nothing to you at the minute, but what basically this allows us to do is refresh this um, query at any point in the future. And this allows us to get the most up-to-date data on that site at that time. So if we come back to killedbypolice.net in a few months' time and we find that there's um, a few more people reported killed by police, then we simply just have to press this query button here and we will get all of the data um, that's on that page at that time. It's as simple as that. So that's really, really cool and magic works lovely. But sometimes we need to give it a little bit of training. So for this, we have to download our desktop application. And you can do that by heading over to import. And what this gives us is the ability to pick and choose certain points on the web page and certain bits of information that we want on the web page without getting every single bit of data. So let me just show you quickly how that works. And then I'm going to hand back to Casper, who's going to show you guys the silk. So it's really, really simple. All you have to do is download the app and then click on New Extractor and insert your URL. So you can see here we've got the web page loaded up nicely. And this acts as a normal browser. We can follow all of these links. But when we turn on Extraction Mode, we can then start adding our own columns. And we can now start adding um, our own rows. And we can start compiling our very own data set. So let's say, for instance, we want to get the state. Simply click the column name as state, tell it that there'll be many rows in this data set, and then in a few seconds, again, it's quite a long web page, so it's going to take a bit of time. In a few seconds, you'll see that we've got all of this data structured in our data set. So we're lifting it from the web page, and we're putting it into our data set. Let's get three more columns. Let's get the gender. Again, we just put in the column title in and then clicking on the bit of data that we need. And there we go. We've got all of the genders of the, um, of the um, victims, gender and race. And then finally, let's get the date as well. 
again, we're just labeling the column and clicking on the particular piece of data that you need. And there you go. You can see that we've got all of the data neatly structured in a table. You can see that we've got some extra lines at the top there. That's not a problem at all. We just have to click on the uh, sort of data set looking button and then tell it to skip the top two lines. And in a few seconds, it should change. And there you go. We've got this whole website completely structured. We also have the ability to use custom X paths and stuff like that. But because this is quite a quick tutorial, we're not going to go into all that stuff quite yet. And then it's just a case on clicking on Done, ending your API, and clicking Publish. We also obviously have the ability to extract images. And we can also extract links and the actual HTML code of the website itself. So once we've got all of the data, we can open it up in a data set. Again, give it a few seconds. And we should see all of the data structured really nicely. We can then download this as Excel, HTML, JSON, or a CSV file, as well as sharing it across all of our social media platforms. We also have the ability, of course, to crawl websites. You've probably all heard of a web crawler before. Well, import is no exception to that. Um, our web crawlers can crawl hundreds of thousands of pages uh, in a few seconds as well. So if, for instance, this data was stretched out across many, many different pages, then we can just set one of our crawlers up, and we can get all of that information that way. Uh, on top of this, we can also get stuff from behind a login using uh, our authenticated extractor tool as well. So once we have all of our data, we can then hand it back over to Casper, who can make a silk out of it. So Casper, I think now's a good time to hand back to you, if that's OK. Yeah, sure. And let me just stop my screen there. I'm that's still surprised how, uh, how uh, easy that goes, Alex. Yeah, um, we pride ourselves on our sort of point and click. We're, we're, uh, we sort of aim at people who can't code. Um, such as myself, um, and uh, we make it pretty easy to get stuff out of a um, web page. Good fun. Thank you so much. Thank yeah. you very much. Kasper, sorry. No, that's OK. Uh, this is exactly how I yeah, many times use Import.io to just uh, get it into a spreadsheet or a, a CSV first. Um, since, I mean, I guess. Since we've really focused on on just the first part of the of the resources and the data collection, I guess this this sort of I guess we we've sort of showed everything um, uh, for this part, but we felt we needed to show a little bit of a sneak peek of uh, of of what the end results will be, what you can sort of do with this in the in the next steps. Even though we're going to focus um, more on that later in other webinars, um, but I thought it's good. Since we've now seen the, the example of the, the scrape of, uh, of the Killed by Police um, website, I think I should show you sort of quickly uh, what it looks like when we put it into, into a spreadsheet and not only clean up the data, but um, I would call it enhance it. And it sounds like we I would add something to it, but that's not the case. But usually within, within the... The available data. There's even more data. Data in there. I think we'll uh, we'll get into into that more in depth the next time. Um, but I can just show you right now what uh, uh, what that means, and I'll also show you a little bit of the the or just very quickly the import process and what the end result will look like. And this is a uh, a demo set that we built. I I think we have several ones. I think we also have like a a, a big live version with all the data in it. Um, uh, one spreadsheet example I'll, I'll, I'll give right now um, is something very easy because all of the rows, all of the information, all of the, the, the people killed had some kind of a, a city or a state location mentioned. Um, and in this case, what we could easily do is uh, by using a, a pivot table in, in the spreadsheet, is add all kinds of information for each separate state. So we could sort of calculate from the original data set, we could calculate 
um, how many people in that state uh, had been killed and compared to the actual state the population at the um, uh, combining those two statistics will get you a per capita death count which maybe tells you a lot more than just the the absolute number of people being killed well, I think we can we can see that in a bit in the in the end result um, we could also add uh, uh, sort of the state color, which means if it's if it's more uh, democratic or uh, 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 republican, or if it's sort of in between, um, what the average age was of the person being killed, um, um, and those include just a, some of the uh, some of the, the data that we could sort of extract from the original data, or just adding adding some uh, some additional information like like the number of the, the state population. Um, from this, I can show quickly what our import process looks like, uh, just so you'll see how easy it is. We'll get into that into a, a, a later webinar. If you if you already have a Silk site, you'll recognize this page because this is uh, what we call the dashboard. This is just uh, uh, just the part of the Silk site that that you as the the administrator, the, the creator of the Silk site, have access to, and here you can here you can manage everything uh, uh, of your site, of your Silk site. Uh, among other things, you can add new data. Uh, you know, we have different ways to add it. Uh, many times we just use the the Google Spreadsheet link. So what you see here, just the, the URL of the Google Spreadsheet that, that we're working in. Let's assume you're you have this. Um, you just copy paste the URL, click import, then it looks at all the different sheets that are available and uh, and asks you to, to pick from it. So I'll just pick uh, one of those, which uh, this is the collection uh, of all these uh, statistics uh, per state. As you see here, we have a, a flag image for each state, which just makes it a little bit more visual and it automatically uh, if it's in the right format the image URLs get uh, get recognized automatically as, as pictures um, the rest all looks good I mean you can you can manage these things we don't have to go into it now let's say you're happy with your uh, with what it looks like then you can just click start and in a couple of seconds it has, in this case, updated all the state information, and it asks you to go directly into explore mode. Explore mode is where you can play with your data, try out different uh, visualization, any kind of charts or maps uh, to look at it. Um, and then, once you, once you're happy with it, you can uh, publish any visualization that you build onto your homepage or another page. Um, and I'll show a little bit of the. Uh, this is sort of our our existing live Silk site that has, uh, uh, depending on when it was updated, has all the latest uh, information uh, available. Um, and like I've shown earlier in the spreadsheet, you can look at the absolute number per state. You can ask which state has the highest death count. Um, as this map shows, it's easily California, followed by Texas. But, of course, I mean, California and Texas are large states, so by adding the state population, we could um, have a look at the, at the uh, per capita death count, which would mean just how many people per, let's say, 1,000 or 100,000 citizens per state are being killed, and that leads to, uh, to, to different numbers. Because you'll see here that California, with a state population close to 40 million, is actually a little bit, let's say, in the middle of the middle of the pack, with um, 2.6 citizens per million citizens uh, uh, being killed. I mean, uh, 2.6 per million in the in the data set. And if you look at the top left corner, you see that Oklahoma actually has a much higher uh, per capita death count uh, with almost uh, seven citizens per uh, per million uh, uh, being killed. Um, and I'll just scroll down a little bit to show you some of the other visualizations that we've added in here. 
Um, like I said, just a little bit of a sneak peek or a teaser to show you what uh, uh, what we could build uh, with it after we scraped it and, and just uh, imported the spreadsheet. And I think just adding the visualization and, and let's say building this building this website maybe took like a couple of hours. Of course, finding the interesting stories and going into it and adding text and, and context and analysis can take a lot longer because I mean there's still if you want good quality stories, you still have to go into it. But just all the technical uh, requirements to building, uh, in this case, a, a website like this is uh, is pretty easy to uh, and pretty quick quickly done. And from here, you can use this silk site. Let's say if you uh, uh, if you want to publish this or uh, use this, you can just use the uh, the actual silk site. Or from here, every visualization you can share and embed. You can embed it into a blog or, or any other website and use all the other uh, options here to, to, sh to share that information. Um, so I think that should cover our little sneak peek into what's next after you've, uh, you've actually scraped uh, the data that you want. Um, and I think it's a good time now to hand it over back to you and see if there's any questions or other stuff to go into. Yes, indeed, uh, and thank you for uh, for showing all that, Casper. Uh, um, we uh, we have uh, three questions and and uh, some really good ones. Um, first of all, a, a more practical one that I'll answer first. Um, it's Milena who is asking us uh, if the webinar will also be available uh, in in video, so she can return to it to uh, learn about import IO and Silk. Uh, yes, this uh, webinar will be uh, will be on YouTube uh, as soon as we're finished. Uh, you will uh, uh, you'll be able to access it through this event page, and uh, uh, I'll also uh, include it in the email I'll send uh, to uh, everyone on the list to uh, uh, for when I will announce the next webinar about uh, cleaning data. Uh, and working and, and other tricks you uh, uh, about working with data sets. So don't worry. And um, I, I'm also sure that uh, Alex will be happy to uh, to help you with import IO. If you send an email to those guys, they are uh, super helpful and responsive. Uh, same goes for us. You can always send us an email uh, uh, with uh, some questions, and we'll help you out as uh, as well as we can. So, uh, and thanks for the question, of course, Milena. And the other two questions, Kasper, you can probably see the, them as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think they're, uh, they're both uh, uh, very well uh, suited for you. So uh, yeah. take it away. Um, about finding localized data, uh, which is a good question, because yes, I just showed some quick, uh, like you said, national data sets, or the, like the FYI one, or the UN, which is even of the whole world, but uh, of course, usually you would want to find some some local data. I think uh, throughout Europe and the U.S., uh, with all kinds of uh, sort of transparency requirements for for governments, it's getting more and more uh, normal uh, for also local municipalities to provide uh, very specific local data. Um, and one example is uh, of the city that. Uh, that our silk main office uh, is located in uh, Amsterdam. Um, so this is an example of uh, what they call open data, which has all kinds of data sets uh, relating to, to the city. You can look at data uh, on the economy and the, the harbor. Of course, in this case, it's in Dutch, because it's uh, local, local data for local journalists or other people interested in it. Um, uh, and so this is just assuming, like it de depends on on uh, on what on what city or state or or, or province or uh, you're located in. Um, but I think it's getting easier and more accessible to, to just, in this case, Google what you more or less want to find, see if there's any uh, um, uh, any kind of open data uh, websites available for your location. Um, I think from the top of my head, this is like a, a quick example, which of course doesn't really uh, suit you specifically if you're not in Amsterdam. Although I'm sure Amsterdam is not the not the only the only city. Um, 
And I think it's a good, a good uh, promise to to look a little bit more at what we've used so far to see if I can find up if, if I can find uh, uh, other specific uh, examples of uh, of local uh, local data sets. And like I've shown previously, we uh, maintain the Silk Data Handbook, which is just available for anyone. I mean, we manage it and we, we add data, but it's free for anyone to to browse through and uh, and use all the uh, all the things that we that we put on here. Um, so I'll I'll have a look at the uh, at the uh, data resource collection that we have at the moment. I think there's about seventy yeah seventy six at the moment in there, and that's definitely not everything we we use or uh, so this is something it's a work in progress we keep adding to it um, so I can go into this uh, after the webinar a little bit more just to, to, to see if I can find uh, very specific things maybe yeah, if I can uh, if I can add if you're um, uh, we don't know where you're from of course but if your municipality doesn't share data in this way then uh, they're a bit behind on the trend, maybe, depending on the exact location, of course. Uh, maybe it's worth it to, uh, to email them and to ask them uh, uh, how close they are with providing more open data, uh, which we, of course, strongly believe in here at Silk. Uh, but I think it's a great question. I can imagine that it can be harder if you work for, for a local newspaper to find uh, open data sometimes. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, I think we, we, we've used for a lot of uh, silk sites, we've, we've used some very sort of specific or localized data. We tend to focus, but then maybe we tend to focus on uh, on California or San Francisco because uh, those maybe are, are big, bigger cities or states uh, that have some interesting topics that we focus on. Uh, but yeah, I guess it, I might get back to you if I can think of. Uh, of, uh, of some more interesting uh, resources, maybe even some kind of data resource that collects all kinds of good uh, local open data sets that, of course, would be even better. Yeah, there's uh, also uh, uh, a silk called Open Data, if I, uh, if I get it right. Um, I think it's US-specific, um, but it contains a lot of... Uh, it's called US Open Data, I believe. I'll share that in the um, in the showcase module uh, right now, so um, you can uh, find it uh, find it there. Okay, right here. Okay. So, uh, but uh, good question. Um, the next one I also uh, really like uh, by Victoria, uh, Renata. Sorry, <laughs> Renata from Mexico City. Um, uh, she says, uh, you tell us that the idea of stories comes out in an organic way, but I wonder how to choose the best numbers or what kind of data are the best when you're thinking in a story based in data. What uh, are your thoughts on that, Casper? Yeah, no, that's, I mean, it, it was maybe a, like a, a, a pretty easy, uh, quick story to just say that we talk about it and then some interesting story comes up. Um, I think that's, the, that's sort of the start of the, the process. Um, of course, the first thing you do when you think of something nice is, is start googling or go to your go to the resources that you that you've uh, previously used to find uh, any kind of uh, statistics. And I guess, uh, of course, depending on the, the topic, what, what you're usually looking for is a lot of um, uh, like a topic that actually has numbers available. It. So if you're looking at um, uh, people being killed by the police, of course you would want to know sort of the uh, the actual numbers per location. But uh, you see that the the, the website we, we found and the data we've used, there's no. Um, I mean, it's just a table full of information about people. So the actual number of how many people per state and how many per capita people per state are being killed by police. That actual number is just something you sort of deduce from the data set that you've uh, that you've used in this scrape. So I think, of course, but with all the visualization options that we have, you uh, uh, you need to have some. I mean, it's, you don't have to. <laughs> like the, the 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 example of the propaganda posters I sh I showed. I don't think there's any real sort of numerical uh, uh, 
uh, indicators uh, in there. You just show it into a grid and you can, but I could look like how many of these posters are from the US and how many are from the UK if you have a big, big collection. Um, but in the end, of course, you would want some kind of, uh, depending on what you're looking for, it's actual sort of hard numbers, maybe statistics. Uh, and um, uh, I think what the quick example just now showed is that maybe just the absolute number isn't always that interesting. Yes, California has the highest death count, but California, California is, by, is also by far the, the biggest state. So it doesn't really mean anything until you put different numbers, to, num numbers, numbers together and get to the, to the percentages or to uh, 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 relative numbers or to the, in this case, per capita, per capita numbers. Um, I think, yeah, or maybe, or maybe you're, you're, you, you ask for something completely different when you say sort of what kind of data, but I'm just thinking of... Uh, of well, when I'm, um, uh, what I'm also thinking about is what I see you and Alicia doing a lot is that you um, uh, also use location data a lot because uh, you can tell stories with maps that way and that you use uh, data which has some kind of distribution in it. So gender or race or uh, or any other uh, kind of the same uh, f uh, number of values that are repeated throughout the uh, data set. Am I right? Yeah, yeah you're absolutely right. Especially the, the last uh, kind of data where for instance, you have a big data set and you have uh, distribution male or female or by race. Um, uh, uh, most of our charts have this distribution option option where you can look at the entire data set and tell you 75% of the data set uh, consists of or has the gender male. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's also something. Um, so you don't actually have numerical data because your spreadsheet says male or female, but you can, uh, you can get sort of numbers out of it and that, that yeah, those numbers are, are part of the story, you, or you could, use, you could use that, or that at least shows you, uh, it tells you something. So yeah, good, uh, good, good addition. <laughs> Definitely the, the types of uh, the types of data that we uh, that we tend to use or that we tend to come up with. Okay, cool. Um, I uh, I think that answers uh, Renata's question. Um, Renata and uh, anyone here, uh, like I said, you can always send us an uh, email. Just go to the website and uh, find our contact address there, or send it to feedback at silk.co. Uh, we'd be happy to help you with any uh, questions or uh, uh, or feedback you have. Um, let me see. Um, uh, there's one more question I see from Karen again. Um, Hi, Karen asks if you can purchase a custom URL that reboots to the Silk site. Um, uh, yes, you can. Um, we, uh, we plan on charging uh, for this uh, uh, in like, uh, like some time. Uh, but for now, if you uh, have a, a nice custom URL that uh, you have yourself, you can email us and we'll take care that your uh, Silk will be uh, routed to a, to a subdomain on that URL or the URL itself. So. Uh, Create a Silk account to sell, send us an email and we'll take care of it. Um, okay, that's nice. Renata, thanks us. Yeah. That's also super You're nice. Welcome. Thank you, thank you, Renata, thank you. for hanging out with us and asking us this question. Um, I think that about uh, wraps up the questions. Uh, great ones. Thank you for that. Um, um, I, I I turned off my face. Let me turn it on to say goodbye. Um, yeah, screen sharing. Uh, I wanted to thank Alex. Uh, thank you so much, Alex, for uh, for showing us how import IO works. I think it's uh, no it's really amazing that in such a short time uh, a tool like you uh, made life for a lot of data uh, journalism and data people uh, easier. Uh, you had to do this with, with super complex Python scripts and whatever, but uh, you make it super easy, and it's very really, really impressive. Yeah. Thanks Thank for you very much. Thank you and, for making uh, it <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was cool. Um, and uh, yeah, um, uh, this about wraps up the first uh, edition of our uh, uh, summer webinar uh, course. In the next uh, edition, we, uh, we'll talk about cleaning up data and um, 
uh, and other tips and tricks about like enhancing data that you already um, uh, collected. And uh, and in the last one, we'll uh, show how we uh, go from a, from data to a story. So uh, we show it by uh, but with the help of, of 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 creating a silk site because that's our product and we know how to do this. But we hope that will also be like a general. Uh, uh, like an uh, educative uh, uh, a thing where, where we can share some experience on how we analyze data and tell stories with it. So, uh, uh, yeah, and thank Casper, of course, who I would al almost forget because he's uh, sitting in the room next to me. Uh, it was great fun to do this. And, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the next one, which will be in uh, uh, about a month, but I will send the exact date to the whole uh, list uh, as, uh, uh, after we wrap this up. So uh, thank you all. Yep, thank you. Bye. Bye.